Welcome to the final week of Anthro 207X. In this week, we'll not only try and recap some of what we've talked about for the last 11 weeks, providing a general theme for how we might view human evolution, but also stress the point that human evolution hasn't stopped. We're still evolving today. Although anatomically modern Homo sapiens may have began to populate the world in various regions by 40,000 years ago, replacing pre-existing populations, it doesn't mean that evolution stopped. Evolution didn't stop when Homo sapiens arrived. It continues today, and we can see evidence for that in a whole host of different ways. And indeed, understanding patterns of variation today requires that we recognize the fact that we're still evolving. To first introduce this topic, though, we'll introduce a remarkable and extraordinarily unexpected fossil find, coming not from 100 or 200,000 years ago, but coming from 20,000 years ago. This find, coming from the island of Flores, from the Langboa cave, presents truly extraordinary variation for something that exists only 20,000 years ago. By 20,000 years ago, there are no Neanderthals on the planet. There are no Homo erectus on the planet. Instead, there's only anatomically modern Homo sapiens, we thought at least. The Lingbo cave you can see here is an extraordinarily large cave that recently has yielded extraordinarily exciting specimens. Now, one of the things, important points to recognize about the island of Flores is that it's quite distant within the Indonesian archipelago. Here we see the island of Flores here, quite a bit removed from Java, an island we've talked about extensively with earlier Homo erectus remains seen here to the west. And one of the important things about Flores, which we'll talk about more in the later section, is the fact that to get to Flores, you have to cross open ocean. It's beyond the point where we have any kind of connection to the mainland shelf, regardless of what time period we're talking about in the Pleistocene, regardless of how low sea levels were or how extensive glaciation was. So Flores was always a sea trip. Someone to get to Flores had to cross open ocean, an open ocean across boundaries where you couldn't see an opposite shoreline. So that's one of the important points to keep in mind with this specimen. Looking at the specimen itself, LB1, the best preserved of the specimens recovered from Lingbao Cave, to this point at least, is remarkably small and primitive. Now when I say remarkably small and primitive, I mean it has an ape-like brain, a brain that's 400 cc's in size, maybe even a little bit less. It has an incredibly small, gracile face. Uh, notice the very small nasal aperture, the ape-like uh, orbits in terms of their proportion, the lack of any frontal development, uh, and the overall gracility of the features that we see here in this specimen. It is extraordinarily small. Here we see the mandibular and maxillary remains from the specimen. And again, we have very small teeth, a very small gracile specimen, though preserving many aspects of a more modern human-like morphology. But we have molars that are very small and primitive in terms of their shape in some ways. When we look at the maxillary dentition, we see that the overall size has led to a feature of dental crowding that we actually fairly commonly see in domesticated animals that also have reduction in the size of their snouts. Here, if you look at the P4, you'll notice that it's oriented the wrong way. Instead of being oriented in a buccolingual fashion, it's oriented in a mesial distal fashion. It's been rotated, in other words. And we see this occasionally in the fossil record. We actually see it in one of the Dimenisi specimens, but it reflects this overall small size. When we look at the mandible, notice that it essentially has no projecting mental eminence, no chin. And again, it's very gracile, very small, very lightly built, and very primitive in many respects. So the question that's presented from LB1 is what is this? How could we have some kind of a human species 20,000 years ago with an ape-like brain? And indeed, the morphology of the postcranial skeleton is also confusing. Matthew Tesheri has argued that the wrist bones of this specimen are actually most similar to a quadrupedal monkey. Not even ape-like in the morphology, but actually even more primitive than that. So in trying to understand what these specimens represent, we need to think about a couple different scenarios. One being the potential that this is simply a very, very small reduced Homo sapien. Perhaps even one that has some kind of pathology associated with it, which leads to a small brain size. There are a whole host of pathologies that are collectively referred to as microcephaly. In other words, small brain or small endocranial volume. There's a lot of ways in which this can happen. So one possibility is that this is a small microcephalic human. Another possibility is that this is an example of insular dwarfism. 
So sometimes when populations become isolated on islands, they become smaller. Actually, it tends to be the case that large things isolated on islands become smaller, and this is actually the case within the Indonesian archipelago, where we find dwarf elephants, and sometimes small things like rodents become large. So rats on islands tend to be really big, bigger things like elephants tend to get really small. In the case of the LB1 fossil hominin, this might be the case of dwarfism of an early hominin species. So another possibility is that this is something like Homo erectus that has become isolated and actually has shrunk in size. Now it's important to note that even if we look at contemporary populations on the island of Flores, they're also quite small in stature, reflecting some degree perhaps of insular dwarfism even in the contemporary populations there. Now this argument as to whether Flores represents a different species of human very late in the Pleistocene, maybe even one that's fundamentally very, very, very primitive, or whether or not it's a pathological example of a modern human is an important debate and one that's very hotly contested within the field right now. Now it's interesting or important to point out that by the time Flores exists, we already have modern humans that have passed through this area. We already have modern humans existing in Australia going back at least 40,000 years ago. So we have modern humans that are also present in this area, regardless of what Flores or the LB1 specimen represents. We'll talk in a moment about how these specimens may have gotten there, then return to this question of how do we best explain the remains from Flores.